at this. Stunning. The Yorkshire Dales, they call it God's own country, and today you can see why. It's fabulous. This has to be the archetypal bubbling brook. All of this fresh, unpolluted rainwater coming down off of the hill, channeling down over these rocks, making these ripples full of oxygen. It should be absolutely teeming with life. Well, it should be, but very sadly, I can tell you that it isn't, because this burn is effectively ecologically dead. I'm here with Paul Bradley, an ecological consultant and an expert in the root of this problem, the invasive American signal crayfish. Oh, look at that. Now, Paul, for a stream which is ecologically dead, this is quite a large organism to be present. And that is a mass of animals, a huge biomass. And we pulled that out of an area of a few square metres. There's a massive number of these things in here. Well, that's right. This is just one night of trapping, but uh, really this is just the tip of the iceberg. Signal crayfish were first brought to the UK in 1976 as part of a commercial farming project. But soon, some escaped into our waters. These crustaceans eat everything, from invertebrates to fish, plant matter, and even other crayfish. The invaders are large and aggressive, and they breed fast. But they're also carriers of a plague, which kills our only native species of crayfish, the white-clawed crayfish. To understand the magnitude of the problem here, drastic measures are required. So we've called in the Environment Agency and some of their heavy-duty equipment. Oh, spectacular. If I can stay on my feet, we're going to drain the stream. All right. It's like something off the Thunderbirds, isn't it? We've dammed a small section of the stream and we're using a powerful pump to expose the rocky bed. This is the only way that an ecologist like Paul can accurately count how many crayfish are in this stream. So, Paul, we're now looking for those which were too small to be caught in the traps, yeah? That's right. Now we start to find just how many are here. And the, there we go. There's one. There's one straight away. Uh, that's about two years old, that one. But there are much smaller ones in there than that. There's one just there. Yeah. There There's you another one. Well, you're getting good at this. Oh. The large ones that people see in traps, just a very, very small proportion. When we look very carefully in this stream, we find up to... Like there's that another one. one. There's another one, you see. Um, up to 50 per square metre. 50? 50 per square metre in this very stream. And we find them 30 centimetres into the gravel as well, so literally millions of single crayfish. Wow. Well, 50 per square metre is almost um, an infestation, isn't it? And I don't like to use that word. I visited this stream every year since 2001, and, and that's actually what I've seen, an infestation. Um, in that time, um, all the fish have disappeared, and the native white claw crabs have disappeared. No fish at all? We've no fish at all now in this stream. They've eaten all of the eggs, all of the young, everything? They, they seem to be. The signal crayfish have consumed almost all other species in this stream, and when they run out of prey, they resort to cannibalism, surviving on their own kind. But this isn't just a local issue. They've spread across the UK at an alarming rate. From their introduction in Dorset, they're now present in 80% of the rivers in England and Wales, and they can be found as far north as Inverness. Mark Owen from the Angling Trust is on the front line in the fight to slow this spread. How are these animals moving? That's the key thing. If you look at the footwear that we've got on today, uh, there's all sorts of little areas in it that you can pick up things accidentally, which is why we're pushing Check, Clean, Drive biosecurity slogan that all water users, and we push it very hard with anglers, that they should be ensuring that their equipment is properly checked, cleaned, dried, before they go to another water 
course. And once they are in a water course, are there any practical solutions in the pipeline? We are working very closely with government scientists at CFAS on six pilot projects where we're looking at different trapping techniques, using anglers um, as, as the volunteers, if you like, to do these. And the initial results of that are really quite promising. So there is some chance that Britain's angling army, if you like, might come to the rescue when it comes to eradicating this species? I very much hope so.